Today I'm installing the Indra Lux EV charger. I haven't installed one of these, so I'm gonna walk you through the whole process and we'll just see how it goes. And it's absolutely freezing today. Along with installing the Hydra Lux, I'm gonna be showing you the difference between the D-line clips, showing you some tools which will make the job far easier, including the Rumpotec cable roller, which I know you all love. I will also show you the things that I think can be improved with this charger. Stupid. <laughs> and I'll be upsetting the data boys again. Okay, so you data boys not gonna like this. I have a little sub main board here, fed by a six mil twin and earth, but what I'm gonna do is take that out. I'm gonna put a six way fuse box one in, so he's got extra capacity. And we've pulled in a 10 mil EV Ultra from here to the other consumer unit. Reason for that is I've then got my Cat5 going from here to the other board, which I can link through for the load curtailment for the charger. We might also have to hardwire the internet connection, but we'll see how we get on. I bought this new uh, long screwdriver because my old one, the end snapped, and I've become quite a fan of it, to be honest with you. After dropping nearly everything, I got this old consumer unit out, and it was time to prepare the new one. I really like this fuse box brand at the minute. It's not the cheapest, it's not the dearest, but it's good quality. I'm still using Uncle Bill's hammer from the 1800s. Got the radio on, hopefully you can't hear that. If you can, that's copyright infringement. Nice and snug. That's that, ready to go. Quickly bang this on the wall and it's time to prepare my cable boot. I've got brick and I've got thermolite blocks today. So I'm gonna use the spit gun for the brickwork. I'm gonna fire into the mortar and then I'm gonna have to use plugs and screws for the thermolite because I'll be honest, this, the spit nails won't fix into it, they'll just fall out. And another thing I was gonna show you was there's two types of D-Line EV Ultra cable clips that I use. Oh, nearly fell over. There's these ones here, which look like that. And there's these ones that look like that, okay? Both of them are fine for six mil EV Ultra. But if you're pulling in a 10 mil, these ones, they won't fit. And these ones do just about, and it'll have to go through the last notch. So my advice, if you're looking for D-line clips, go for these ones. And look, you do get an absolute solid fixing with that in the mortar. These are called ratchet cutters, if you've never seen these before, which are great for all sorts of SWA cables. With this 10mm EV Ultra, I can't quite get my coppers around it, so I'm gonna use these. And the way it works is, just do that, feed your cable through that hole, don't put your finger in there. And then you just ratchet it till it cuts, like this. What you do, put the ratchet cutters around your cable like that. And then just cut. Effortless. This EV Ultra cable is super simple to strip. And I love working with it. This is high tough. Absolutely no need for SWA on this install. It's all clipped direct. Easy peasy. The fuse box RCBOs disconnect both the line and neutral conductors. So I've got the 40 amp RCBO for the EV charger, 20 for a radial, and a 16 for this other radial here. The lighting circuit in here is on the house disc board, and that's why they're on if you're wondering and why I haven't got a six amp RCBO in there. Another thing you can get are these things here. These uh, work with the spit gun. All you do is put it in there and then you fire into the brickwork. I'll be completely honest with you, I forgot to push the record button and I've already done this. So I'll just show you what it looks like now. Very annoying. So all I've done was fire them into the wall, into the mortar, and then I put a tie wrap through and it just secures my twin and earth. And the reason I've done this was I've tried clipping it. I've hit my hand like three times. This is like the Sparky's mate when it comes to pulling in cables. It's the Rumpotec cable roller. Brilliant. This is the smaller cable roller, which is more than adequate for the cable drums that I use. And it's also perfect for twin and earth cable. Not the cheapest product on the market, but I think it's the best one out there. Stay. Stay. I'm thinking about replacing these steps with the little giant ones. If you've got some, let me know what you think. Whoa. <sighs> Nearly died. So with this EV Ultra, it has a Cat5 inside it, if you didn't know. And what that is gonna allow me to do in 
Today's installation, uh, is that the best way I want to do this? So what that's going to allow me to do in this installation is use one pair for the low curtailment and that leaves me three other pairs, which means I can hardwire an internet connection. Now on another video that I'd done, which was like the worst cable pull job ever, I mentioned that the colors that you use for the data connections don't matter. Turns out I upset quite a few data boys with that one. So the colors do matter, but I'm gonna upset you again today because I'm gonna use whatever colors I want. And the other thing I know you're gonna be really upset about is I am using Wagos today and not jelly crimps. I'm sorry about that. I just forgot to buy some. So apologies in advance. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm loving it. So that is this end nearly prepared. Ugh. I'm going to fire up this consumer unit from in the house, get that bit buttoned up, and then we're on to the charger. So inside the box, you get a front cover, a quick start guide, a mounting bracket, fixings, CT clamp, wireless dongle, cable mounting bracket, and this is the charger with a massive tie wrap on. So this charger, it would appear that we have three cable entries, two at the bottom and one in the back. And I wanna try and go back entry today, but it all depends on if I can get my 25 mil stuffer in there, there's still room for the cable. We've got a couple of little tie wraps here holding the door on, and this is the inside. And what's interesting about this is I think we're gonna have room for the 25 mil stuffer, which is great, but it's got these little clips here, and that is to route your cables into these connectors. So it's forcing a good installation, which is great. Up here we have the CT connections. You're gonna need a punch tool for that. And this cable here is for the wireless dongle. The other thing I wanted to point out to you was on the box, it's got a scan to view installation guide. It's got a QR code there. And if you do that, what happens is it brings up this in-depth how to install guide. So you can't go wrong, hopefully. So the first thing I'm gonna do is mark my height. And I'm gonna go back there. I'm gonna go and center of this wall, which is there. And I'm just gonna have a measure to see where that's gonna fall inside. Perfect. Rounding bracket, make sure it's level and mark your fixing holes. We're gonna go one, two, three, and four. In the pack, it comes with plugs and screws, so thank you. And they're not bad ones either. This mounting bracket is stainless steel by the looks of it. Perfect. And then I'm hoping that I'm gonna have enough room within this charger for my 25 mil gland. Don't let me down, Indra. Don't let me down. And when you're drilling this, don't be a donut and leave it on hammer. Just take it off and you won't blow the brickwork. Takes a bit longer, but worth it. That's where we've come out. Right there. No brickwork blown. Once you've got your cable through, just slide your charger on. Oh, I've got to put my stuff and gland in. Start again. Right, <laughs> once you've got your stuffing gland in, and if you see, there's not a million miles of cable route here, so we're gonna have to get this bang on. Anyway, slide your cable through the stuffing gland, which is quite difficult actually, getting this hook on and getting this cable through. There we go. Then once that's in place, take a marker pen, and mark where this cable comes through the stuffer, and that's where we're gonna strip it back to. Then take it back off and strip it and put it back on. It's the easiest way of doing this. Yes, you can strip the cable with a charger in place, but if you're using an EV Ultra stripping tool, you won't get it close enough to the stuffing gland. So just take it off and make life easy. It takes two minutes. Ba -da -ba -ba. Got a McDonald's song stuck in my head. What I like to do, personal choice, is to run some silicon, take that out, just around the cable, like so. 
and then pop the charger back on. Neighbours have just turned up, so if I go quiet, it's because I'm shy on camera. And then Jesus Christ, I've got to try and nip this up. Hello. Yep. Yeah. Always winning. Sometimes they just don't make it easy though. Zero room to do this up. I think I'm gonna take this cover off and have another go. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go, it's all on camera. <laughs> Why are you not coming out, it's another one. So, time to be honest, what I've had to do is take this pl plastic cover off in order to do up my stuffing gland. That is annoying. So, be aware of that. A little bit more room to do this up would have been lovely. You may be watching this thinking you're doing this all wrong, Adam. And if so, leave some tips in the comments below. Not horrible ones though. I'll delete those. Let's put this thing back on. There are two screws underneath that you need to do up to secure your charger to the bracket. One is right behind this cable, so that's really, really handy. Definitely a wall knuckle scratcher. And then if you look at the start, this instructions that they give you, it's got a proper cable routing like that, which is basically these here. So these will clip in like that. So what I'm attempting to do here is I've got, I'm using the brown and the white for the load curtailment, which leaves me with the orange, the green and the blue pairs. And I'm gonna keep this in order, make off my RJ45 connection with this, pop it in there, and I'll show you what I've done with the other connections. So let's hope it works. I am not a data expert. And then what we've got is the RJ45 connection just in there. I've left these nice and long because I'm too scared to cut them short in case I've done it wrong. And that's it. I'll show you what I've done in the consumer unit. Okay, so you data boy's not gonna like this, but I haven't got jelly crimps, I'm really sorry. So this is the two EV Ultra cables, the brown and the brown whites connected up. And that's giving me continuity through to the EV Ultra in the house for my CT. And then the rest of these cables are just joined up, which goes to this Cat5 with an RJ45, which goes into this network connection up here. Testing time. I just wanted to show you quickly, I've done all my TED testing. I just wanted to show you how this looks all dressed in in the end. And these little clips are a nice little touch. Unnecessary maybe, but they're a nice touch, keeps it all in place. And if you're wondering why there's a terminal here spare, that's called a ref that's for a reference pin. So what you can do is install an earth spike as an addition if you so wish, but we're not doing that today. Don't need to. And what I'm gonna do is plug in this RJ45 connection and with a bit of luck, I'll have some flashing lights inside the charger. <sighs> Let's see if I've worked my magic. I don't know if you can see, but I've got blue lights just in there. I've got neons on this. Well, that's the worst thing that could possibly have happened. You know when you drop a screw and there's a gully just below where you're working? <sighs> that's what I've just done. I wonder what red flashing lights mean. Nothing good, probably. Don't drop it this time. Okay, let's find out what red flashing lights mean. So the red flashing lights on the Indra was basically, it's quite sensitive. With the screws, there's a tamper switch on the back and you've got to make sure basically that it's all sitting level. So, oversensitive really. And I'm just running through all my tests now. And what I like to do, if I haven't shown you this before, is on my iPad, I have an app called Notability. And on this app, I do all my site visits on it. You can see photos of the site visits. Then I've got all my testing. And then when I get onto my live testing, I take photos of all my results. Then I've got a record of everything. And I take photos of the serial number of the charger. So in the future, if anything has changed or goes wrong, I've got a record at the time, it was absolutely fine and a record that it is the charger that I installed. When it becomes time to commission the charger, the easiest thing I find to do is just phone up Indra and commission it over the phone. Word of warning, you need to be an Indra approved installer to get this commissioned. 
So make sure you do their training. That's the funky waiting music that I'm listening to. This could be a while. Okay, so don't phone up Indra to get this charger commissioned because they were very unhappy. Apparently everyone's doing it. You have to go through the Dynamo software. You need to create an account, otherwise it's not gonna commission. Annoying. Anyway, let's put the cover back on. I put a tamper-proof seal on one of the screws. All I've got to do now is put this cover on, which sits like that. And then there's a couple of screws underneath just to do this up. Now it does come with a cable hook, but I don't know if you need it. So we're gonna have a look and see what it looks like when it's wrapped around. This is the 10 meter version. This is gonna twist up like you wouldn't believe, I know it is. Right, untwist, untwist. As you can see, this is quite an annoying process. I'll wind it up and then see what the customer says, if they're happy with it or not, basically. Or if they want the hook. It's a lot of cable. Oh dear, it doesn't fall very well. We might go for the hook. I'll see what he says. So the cable basically looked naff around it. We tried putting the hook above it with big loops, didn't like that. So what we've done in the end, if I turn you around, is we put it just down the side on the hook and that's fine. So my client specifically went for the Indra charger because it's got a 10 meter lead. He's on Octopus and it ticked all the boxes. He just liked the look of it. It's nice and discreet on the wall. So it's not a bad choice. One thing he did pick up on though is the doors hinged on a couple of tie wraps. Wasn't impressed with that Indra. And final note, don't call Indra, they're very angry. Subscribe to my channel.